I know it's been a while since I last uploaded a video on the channel. It's been over a month since I talked about Iran since the Asian Cup, but there's been this cloud of uncertainty about what's next for the Iranian national team. I know all of you have been asking me for months, Shyam, what do I think is next for the Iranian national team, the future for this team? So I felt it was finally time to do a video going into World Cup qualification on what I think is next for the Iranian national team. Oh yeah, and by the way, I will be doing YouTube live watch alongs for both of Iran's World Cup qualification matches against Turkmenistan on the 21st and 26th and all of their future matches leading up to the 2026 World Cup so make sure to be there or be square. I think the best place to get started when it comes to talking about the future of the Iranian national team is the head coach position, where for all of you who don't know, Amir Qadanoui is confirmed to be the Iranian national team head coach going into the 2026 World Cup. In the beginning, leading up to the Asian Cup, when this was announced, I wasn't quite fond of that being the case, especially with some of the dull friendly performances we had leading up to the tournament. But once the tournament began, he did kind of start growing on me little by little, especially after the amazing performance we had against Japan, knocking out arguably the best team in Asia in that tournament, but then sadly losing to Qatar in the semifinals. But nonetheless, he definitely changed my perspective and probably some of your guys's about him being the head coach. So I will for sure give him that. And there was the quote after the match against Qatar where we did get knocked out of the tournament, which really did put me on board with him, where to paraphrase, he basically said that he wants to start introducing way more younger players into the national team fold and start start moving on from the older players from this national team, which is something that me and many of you guys have been preaching since the 2022 World Cup that this national team needs to start the revamp, introducing more younger players because a lot of these guys that got called up at the 2022 World Cup and in the recent Asian Cup just don't really have a future with this national team. They're not getting any better and we should be giving that kind of game time to the younger players that will get better and gain that experience at the senior level, which it's looking like he's keeping his promise based off of the call-ups we had for these upcoming World Cup qualification matches against Turkmenistan. He's brought in a handful of young, promising players into this camp for World Cup qualification and I think a lot of Team Melee fans are very happy about it. So I think the first main Main big thing is for this national team is to keep on bringing in more and more of our young promising talented players that deserve minutes for the national team I'm not saying let's play a whole entire young squad in World Cup qualification and friendlies but have that healthy mixture of senior players that still have something to give like a Taremi, Asmoon, Jahan Bash who are playing still at the highest levels in Europe but having that sprinkle or handful of young promising players like a Hossein Ejaz, Salmani, Fala, whoever it may be as well in this team but not just calling them up but actually giving them minutes in the matches because just getting called up to the camps and not getting any game time it's like kind of counterproductive in my opinion but Galinui has said he is gonna start bringing in more of the younger players to the national team so as long as he keeps his promise I think we're all good there when it comes to some of our current players like Taremi, Asmoon, Jahanbash, Kodus, our top players that are playing in Europe but are definitely on the older side I think it is so important for those players to keep striving and keep trying to be big names for Iranian football in Europe to hopefully inspire this younger generation of players to push them to be like, hey guys, the reason why we are so good and we play at such a high level and why we can produce in Asian Cups, World Cups, is because we went to Europe as soon as we could and when we did, there was such an exponential growth in our play and that's why we became so good. Because for a majority of those guys, they went to Europe as soon as they could. Asmoon, Jahanbash, they never played domestically in Iran and that's why there's such a big gap with those type of players compared to players that domestically play in Iran. We see guys like Haj Safi, Mohorami, Odus, Asmoon be fairly important players for their teams in Europe. I know Haj Safi is more on the older side and we'll see how much his minutes dwindle over this next couple of years with Athens. Mohorami is coming back from that ACL injury. Kodus, since the Asian Cup, really hasn't gone those significant minutes like he did 
free Asian Cup. And definitely for Asmoon, it was kind of a rough time getting minutes when Mourinho was the head coach. But since De Rossi has come in, Asmoon's minutes have exponentially gone a lot better. And it seems like De Rossi quite likes the guy as well. When it comes to Jahan Bash, his minutes have very much dwindled at Feyenoord. He hasn't necessarily had a bad season because every time he has played, he has done really well for the team. But with a mixture of injuries and how much better Feyenoord's roster has gone, he's gone a bit out of favor for Arnold Schlott. And it looks like he's probably going to be moving in the summer transfer window, hopefully to a pretty good side in Europe. I don't really want to see him take a big step back going to, I don't know, the Saudi league or to Iran. Obviously for bias reasons, I'd love if he came to MLS, but for the national team, it's not a good look if he did go to MLS. So I don't want to see any moves like that from him. But we all know John Bashk is an utmost professional for Iranian football. So I know he'll make the right decision. And as well, I think he's going to be our mainstay captain in World Cup qualification as well. When it comes to Tarami, there's a little bit of a love-hate relationship I have going on with him right now because this season has been an absolute stinker by him. Not only just for Porto, but as well for the national team. You could tell that whole transfer saga to United or Tottenham or AC Milan, whatever it was, last summer transfer window has really affected him this season. He's been pretty bad this year with Porto. He was pretty bad for Iran in the Asian Cup, which is super disappointing because as I said earlier on in the video, he's arguably Iran's best player. And if you guys were living under a rock, it's already been confirmed at the end of this season, he will be joining Inter, which I think is a pretty good move for him, unless he puts up these kind of performances in numbers at Inter. If he's like the Tottenham of two seasons ago, I think he will be a mainstay at Inter Milan. But if he doesn't get back on track after falling off the wagon so badly as he has because of the whole transfer saga that happened last summer, we could see this go down as a big flop in the transfer window, which again, I really hope isn't the case. But if he keeps up these bad performances, I don't really see why he should be getting called up to the national team as well. I know that's a very huge hot take, but Tottenham, especially at the Asian Cup, just made me reevaluate. Should this guy still be getting called up to the national team? I know he's one of the top players in Europe, but he's not scoring many goals. He's not playing well. He's not playing well for the national team. And I'd rather just give those minutes to a younger striker that is hungrier and we know can grow and only just get better. Because the reality is with Tottenham, I don't think he's gonna make it to the 2026 World Cup. He might be in the roster, but if he's our starting striker at what, like 36 years old at that World Cup, I don't think it's that good of a look. I'm hoping we have someone with Asmoon that is at that level playing up top with him if we're playing like a two striker type of formation. Regardless, these were some of the players I wanted to highlight in the second point that I'm making that I want the experienced players for this national team to help push the younger group of players to go to Europe, to be like them to be top players in some of the best leagues in the world, setting the example for the younger generation. Then for the final point that I want to discuss in today's video is keeping the standard that this national team has built over like the past decade. Because many of us might forget that Iran was kind of a yo-yo national team with sometimes qualifying for World Cups, sometimes not qualifying for World Cups. But when Carlos Kirosh got introduced as the head coach of the national team, it almost became a norm, an expectation at the bare minimum that this national team qualifies for World Cups, makes good runs in Asian Cups. And we mustn't let those standards drop at all. Regardless if we're going through a transitional period of introducing younger players, if we do things right, we shouldn't be losing the standard that we have built so hard and worked so hard for, for this national team. I know all of us finally want to see the national team make it to the knockout rounds of a World Cup. Do I think it could happen in this upcoming World Cup in 2026? Maybe based off of the new format that they're introducing. But my hopes aren't really that high. If we couldn't do it in 2018, we couldn't do it in 2022. I'm not really sure if we could do it in 2026. Maybe this is like a 2030 thing, depending on how much these younger players develop and what our crop of players are looking like then. But looking at it right now at that short-term, long-term view, I think it is most important that we qualify for the World Cup, continuing that standard of always qualifying for the competition and start planning for a long-term future. I really want us to get rid of the short-term success because I'd rather have long-term success investing in 
younger players, developing them into the next Toremis, Asmuns, Jahanbashks, whoever you want to call as one of the better players on the national team, to then see can this next generation of players finally break that duck and get this national team to win an Asian Cup, make it to the knockout rounds of a World Cup. And if we do continue bringing the young talent to the national team, then we can expect some up and down performances, results. It's not going to be exactly the prettiest, but I really don't mind that if we're developing and introducing more younger players. And as well, something I forgot to mention during the recording is scouting more dual nationals for the national team. We haven't brought in any dual nationals since Samon Kouladus, and there's a plethora of great dual nationals that if Iran plays their cards right, could scout for the national team and as well could be very helpful for the national team fold. I want us to cut off this short-term success of let's keep playing this old and washed generation of players that should have done it in the 2018 World Cup, 2019 Asian Cup, 2022 World Cup, and just let this young and more hungrier group of players start developing and just take the baton that this former generation wasn't able to do, but continue the standard that the generation was able to build with constantly qualifying this national team for World Cups, being a consistent contender from Asia at World Cups. Then hopefully come maybe 2030, we have a dark horse run finally in a World Cup because this national team's capable of it. It's just a matter of continuing the building blocks that we have built the past decade and then continuing them and adding just that little bit more on top of it. Be it the head coach introducing younger players, the older players telling this younger group of players, go to Europe, try to play at the highest level. Don't just stay in Iran. Look how good we got because we went to play in the Dutch League, in the Portuguese League, in the Premier League. It's only going to help elevate this national team, inspire more younger players that, hey, if he can do it, if this guy who plays on the national team, like Taremi, like Jambash, like Odus, can be a golden boot winner, can score a Premier League goal of the month, that I can do it too because they're from these streets in Iran just like myself. And that's up to these senior players to push this, these younger players to be like, you guys should do it as well. Because if we're going to be honest with ourselves, the domestic league in Iran is not really that good. And we're seeing that in these recent Asian Champions League performances from the Iranian teams. And that's a whole other discussion in itself. But nonetheless, boys and girls, that's going to be the end of today's video. And I think most likely this video will be out on Eden Oru. So I do want to say to all of my Iranian viewers that are watching this video that are subscribed to the channel, Eid Shoma Mubarak. And I hope you guys all have an amazing New Year spent with your family, having Sabzi Polomahi. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to be there for the watch alongs for World Cup qualification against Turkmen and any other future Iranian national team matches leading up to the 2026 World Cup. But boys and girls, I hope you'll have a lovely day.